go pick up any Forex uh, primer or book about the Forex or even a lot of books about the economy in general or economics in general and there is a common theme amongst economic announcements that they'll tell you that the first and most important economic announcement every month is the NFP payroll report. Well, there's a problem with this. Uh, we're we're going to talk about this report since this is the week that that report is due. It's due on the first Friday of every month. And it typically, unless there's a holiday, that's exactly what happens. Now, however, there's a accompanying or a sister report that comes out on the Wednesday before the first Friday. So uh, we're in fact, looking at both of those this week. One report is comes from ADP. This is the spoiler. Now, ADP is a company that produces, they're an outsourced payroll company. So if you own a small business or a large business or a mid-sized business, you're, you're very likely, in fact, one in six employees in the US are actually getting their check from ADP. ADP processes the payroll, does all the tax filings. Uh, you can do a lot of reporting, things like this. Very, very uh, uh, good service, good service. And very comprehensive. So they have a broad uh, overview of the US labor market. NFP is uh, produced by the government and it gathers its data from unemployment insurance filings, which are a little different. So we're going to talk about these reports and kind of how they differ and ultimately how we might be able to use them. And then we're going to follow up as those reports come out. So this week, this is going to be a good week to have this discussion. So let's talk about this a little bit from a statistical perspective. I know, I know it's your favorite subject. Uh, first of all, the ADP report has some differences with um, the NFP or the official government report here in sample size. So for example, the NFP report samples approximately 160,000 businesses. Sounds like a pretty big sample, right? Well, it is, it is for sure. The ADP report samples 392,000 businesses. So once again, representing basically one in six US employees across basically every industry. So much larger sample size. This is one of the several reasons why these numbers will always differ. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the number of new jobs being added, which is that's that's the number everybody's concerned about with employment reports is how many new jobs were added to the US economy because that indicates expansion. How many jobs were taken away indicates contraction. So it'll be a negative or a positive number. Well, based on the sample size here, we might have a little bit better confidence that the ADP report is more accurate than the NFP report. Well, the other difference that I mentioned just a minute ago is where do they get their data? So ADP, for example, gets them from the paychecks they're cutting. So uh, as a business owner, I can tell you I don't make mistakes on my paychecks. Uh, however, when it comes to uh, filing unemployment insurance, sometimes I'm a little late. Uh, I mean, I pay it, but it, it's not quite the same urgency is really what it is. So it introduces a little bit of additional error into the NFP report. Now, uh, in addition to that, one thing that we have to understand from a statistical perspective, uh, one thing that statisticians will always talk about is what's their confidence interval. And this gets to, well, when do I really pay attention to the uh, ADP or the NFP report? And when do I mostly just disregard it? Well, so here's, here's, a, here's a, an example. Let's say that the NFP report came out today and they said that there was net zero jobs added or taken away from the economy. So it wasn't a 100,000 plus or, or negative 50,000 jobs taken away or anything like that. It just even right out, there was no gain or loss from the month before. Well, you have to ask yourself, how confident are they in that number? Would you like them to be, let's say, 90% confident? Because they know that this is not the right number, they, but it's the best estimate they can get. And statisticians will develop a confidence level. So they'll say, well, uh, in order for us to be 90% confident, we'd want to enlarge that range. So we'd want to say that the, the real number was probably within a certain range. And if you want them to be 95% confident, then they're going to increase that range. They say, well, the real number is probably within this range. Well, do you want to know what the range is for this one? Plus or minus 430,000 jobs to get to a 90% confidence. So that means that when they give this number, and if you were to ask them, okay, I want you to tell me, 
with 90% confidence, where's the real number here of jobs added or lost to the U.S. economy? They would say, well, it's somewhere between a new 430,000 jobs added and 430,000 jobs taken away. We're 90% confident it's somewhere in that range. Now, I'm kind of leading you along here just a little bit. That is the real, those are the real numbers, by the way. But you can make fairly reasonable assessments, maybe not 90% confidence level, but you can say, well, we're maybe 70% confident that it's within 100,000 plus or minus. This is why I set certain benchmarks. I like to see something greater than a positive 100,000 jobs added or a negative 100,000 jobs taken away before I get too concerned. Now, over here on the ADP report, we have probably very similar statistical sampling problems. The error is probably uh, less over here than it is over here, but there is probably an error uh, level here. Now, the, however, we can try to debunk or whatever we want to do as much as we want on these numbers, but traders still care about it. And typically, it's traders that are most concerned about risk. So what they'll look at is economic risk equals market risk. If we're in the riskiest markets, we're going to respond to this very actively. So I would say equity traders, for example, are going to respond very, uh, very strongly to these numbers. So even if they're uh, within s such a tight range that, that, the, that you almost have no confidence that it's, that it's within the estimates, which are largely meaningless with an error uh, uh, amount there. It, it, the estimates are so narrow, it, it, it almost has no meaning here. But traders will nonetheless respond to it. What I have found is that when the report comes out in favor of the current trend, so if we're talking about high risk trades or high risk markets, rather than equities, we could leap right over onto the dollar yen, for example. We could say, well, when the estimate comes out in favor of the dollar, we see the trend, or in favor of the trend, so if the trend is in favor of the dollar, and uh, the estimate is, comes out positive, so that, that would be good for the dollar, we're likely to see that trend continue, and the verse, vice versa is also true. In fact, you can look at this chart here. I've put little arrows here based on just where did the number come out based on expectations, and you'll notice that when it is disruptive to the trend, so when the arrow is pointing against the trend, meaning that it came out against uh, the way you would normally think this trend should continue, it disrupts it. When it comes out in favor of the trend, then we, we see that the trend accelerates or we really get a breakaway, which is largely, that's what we're looking for to happen this week. We have two opportunities for this to happen. We have Wednesday's ADP report and we have Friday's NFP report, and we're gonna be following up on those each time they come out so we can really get a grasp on, well, how do they compare and how can we really use them in our trading?